Hi guys, I'm Kalilo Reynolds and I'm back with another episode of Money Mondays brought to you in partnership with Proven Wealth. You might have heard of another investment opportunity on the market. This one is a bond being offered or what they call floated by New Fortress Energy. Some of you have seen it and asked me to explain what is a bond? So let me explain. There are many different types of investment instruments, and these are ways for companies to raise money. Those of you who follow this page regularly are very familiar with IPOs. A couple weeks ago, I also explained what a rights issue is, one of which is coming up in September. And in fact, whether you're a savvy investor or not, you've probably heard the term stocks and bonds, as these are some of the most common investment instruments. Common wisdom is that you put your money in stocks and bonds when you're investing for the long term, although stocks can be a short term investment too. So a bond is a type of loan made by an investor like you to a borrower. The borrower is usually a corporation or a government. Government bonds are also called treasury bonds or T-bonds or also government paper. The government of Jamaica issues bonds from time to time and you might hear about emerging market bonds which are bonds offered by the governments of countries that are considered emerging markets or what they used to call the third world. Apparently the new politically correct term is emerging markets. So yeah, they're a very popular way for governments to raise money because a government isn't a private corporation that can list on the stock market. You see all that debt that Jamaica has? A lot of it is in the form of bonds. And like I said, corporations can issue bonds too. Bonds are usually considered a safer investment than stocks because the bond market doesn't rise and fall alongside the stock market. So it can be a good way to diversify your portfolio. The concept of a bond is that the borrower is borrowing from several people, could be thousands of people, rather than just going to one lender like a bank. Bonds are usually for very large amounts that a single lender might not be able to meet anyway. So it's kind of like crowdfunding, except that it's a loan, not a donation. You know that you can go to the bank and get a loan for a house or a car or whatever, right? And they'll tell you the interest rate and the length of the loan and what your monthly payments are going to be and so on. Well, did you know that you can also be a lender? That very same bank could issue a bond and you as an investor could decide to buy into that bond. What it means is they're borrowing money from you, which they have to repay. And like any loan, the terms of repayment will be outlined. Here are some of the terms that you're likely to hear when talking about a bond. The issue price is the original price of the bond. But guess what? The price of the bond can change over time because bonds are often traded on stock markets or even privately. So you could end up buying a bond for less than the issue price or more than the issue price down the road. Think of it kind of like an IPO, the initial public offer. As you know, the price can go up or down after the initial offer. Then you have the face value. That's the amount that the bond will actually be worth when it matures. The date of maturity is essentially the end of the bond or the end of the loan. That's when the issuer will have to pay you back the full face value of the bond. The coupon rate is the interest rate and the coupon dates are the dates that the issuer will pay you interest payments. By the way, the coupon rates can be either fixed, meaning the interest rate stays the same throughout the entire duration of the loan, or variable, meaning the interest rate can go up or down. So you might see something like a GOJ 7.5% 2034 bond. I just made that up, don't go looking for it. But that would mean the government of Jamaica has issued a bond with a coupon rate of 7.5% that matures in 2034. So you'd get back your full money by 2034, but between now and then you'll get interest payments at 7.5%. Depending on the terms of the bond, there might be some principal repayments due along the way too in the form of bullet payments. So let's talk about interest rates for a bit. 
as a borrower, let's say you're taking out a car loan, you want to look for a low fixed rate. So once you lock in that rate, they can't go and raise it on you in the future. But when you become a lender now, you want to look for higher rates, don't you? Because you want to make as much return as you can. The tricky part is that the higher the interest rate usually means the higher the risk. Riskier investments usually offer higher interest rates to make it more attractive to potential lenders. That's why Jamaican government bonds over the years have had such high interest rates. The only way anyone would lend us any money was if we offered a spectacular return because it was just so risky to invest in Jamaica, not knowing if the country is going to default and you end up losing your money. So now that you understand what a bond is, let me tell you a bit about the offer from New Fortress Energy. New Fortress is an energy company based in the United States. They're the only supplier of liquefied natural gas LNG to Jamaica. LNG is a cheaper and cleaner source of energy than heavy fuel oil, HFO. New Fortress sells LNG to JPS, which it uses to generate electricity. Over the past couple of years, JPS has been converting its plants to use more and more LNG and less and less HFO because, like I said, it's cheaper and cleaner. New Fortress, which, by the way, is listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange in the States, so it's a pretty big company, now wants to raise $185 million U.S. dollars. That's 25 billion Jamaicans, so pretty massive. Think about the IPOs in Jamaica. The largest ever dollar amount was with Cinco at $6 billion. So that's chump change compared to what New Fortress wants to raise. So you can see why they've chosen a bond, because it's a pretty large amount of money. What's interesting is that they've chosen to float this bond in Jamaica. Since, like I said, they're a publicly listed company on the NASDAQ, they could have easily floated this bond in America. But it could be a positive sign for Jamaica that they've chosen to do it here, meaning that they have the confidence that they can actually raise that kind of money here. It's the largest bond ever floated in Jamaica and one of the largest in the region. So why are they raising this money? Well, they want to use the funds to build a 150 megawatt heat and power plant in Clarendon to supply JPS and Jamalco. The project is expected to be completed by the first quarter of next year. Anyway, I've given you a lot to chew on today. Now when you hear about bonds, you know what it is, and you know some of the key things to look out for. That's it for this edition of Money Mondays, brought to you in partnership with Proven Wealth. I'm Kalila Reynolds. See you next week.